Hey y'all, welcome to Leftover Donuts. This is a channel dedicated to fish with a PH. Uh, it's for fish nerds, fish novices, and everyone in between. Uh, tonight I'm recapping Fish's two-night stand in Wilmington, North Carolina, following up their three-night run in Alpharetta, Georgia. Here we go. Night one, set one, we open with a happy birthday to you. You know, I listen to the, uh, I don't listen, I don't watch the streams, I only listen, and you know, due to my hearing loss, I often can't really hear or tune into like what they're saying or what the banter is like between Songs, but I looked it up and this was a happy birthday to you dedicated to Jim Pollock, who is responsible for a lot of the fish related art. Then we got a simple. This had some like uh, dark bluesy stuff, light hose, and then it kind of simmered away. Uh, following that, we got Camel Walk, followed by Gotta Jaboo. Uh, I thought this had an upbeat, catchy, infectious kind of blues guitar feel. Followed by Steam, it's kind of a mini shred fest in Steam. And then we got Poor Heart, and uh, I think this was an appropriately spirited, page-heavy rendition. Cavern, which I thought was kind of a weird mid-set placement. And then a divided sky, and I was uh, thinking about how the history for this one might be interesting to trace. I feel like similar to Harry Hood, uh, Trey's approach to this jam over the years, the approach is keyed more toward pentatonic and blues than it has previously. So I'd be curious to take a look at that. Then we got a casual enlightenment. This is uh, not my favorite Mike tune, probably one of my less favorite Mike tunes, but Trey added some nice blue mustard to it. That's what I have written here. So then we got a shade, and then to close out the first set of night one, we got a drift while you're sleeping. Okay, set two of night one. Uh, we opened with a timber. Uh, uh, then we went into a song I heard the ocean sing. This was interesting because I thought uh, sty uh, stylistically similar to Timber. Um, so it was kind of a fitting next step and it got a kind of jazz fusion, uh, bluesy feel with a lot of organic instrumentation, uh, a very organic modulation of major with kind of a guitar driven bluesy jam, some nice live page piano, and then some nice electric piano uh, fading out to semi-ambient uh, exploration. Uh, I almost felt like it was evocative of kind of a 2003 era fish with a little more pomp and circumstance. And then we got a bit of a ripcord to to light this thing uh, went kind of hose, H-O-S-E, uh, got a little upbeat experimentation, kind of blues, then kind of ambient contemplative. It sort of was seemed to be edging on slave around minute 10, meaning edging on slave to the traffic light around minute 10, then kind of a catchy major groove. And then Mercy, which is returning to this new tray showcase in set two, kind of a simple evocative ballad. Yeah, I think I hadn't really heard this one before for I had a you know, wasn't paying attention to it. I think I'm pretty sure this is a fish debut, obviously not for Trey, uh, but I don't know if I'd really heard this before, but I really liked it. And then 20 years later, you know, and this sort of epitomized to me that there's sort of a great kind of stylistic unity in this set. You know, I felt like it was a very reflective, contemplative, you know, Alpharetta was kind of like the bat shit really going for it shows and then this was like more like internal yeah so i think that i i think that for this one trey kind of um i don't remember what this means but it seemed like he kind of jumped the gun on going into the outro and so yeah this outro for 20 years later often leads to kind of a woozy out of time jam uh not completely dissimilar to split open melt but with sort of a little more restraint and this one here is is pretty solid, going to kind of a blues rock wah wah groove around the nine and a half minute mark. Then we get number lined, as it were, with backwards down the number line. I don't know if that's technically number lined. I don't remember if that that's a that means that it's a rip chord to number line or what that means. But um, backwards down the number line. This uh, I kind of feel like this one and twenty years later. Um, often end up in the same show. Or maybe that's just me. And then following that up with Bug, uh, same key as backwards down the number line. And again, it's that sort of uh, desire to kind of maintain the kind of stylistic continuity and, 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 and an overall kind of feeling of continuity and cohesion within the set. And then Say It To Me Santos, which as uh, sort of on Alpharetta Night 3, if you remember... Uh, more ends that 
crazy second set on night three of the song more it kind of uh peaceably re resolves the chaos of that set and in this case santos is bringing chaos to basically resolve or kind of erupt the kind of contemplative beauty of wilmington night one and then for a night one encore we got howling um i thought this was like kind of the first great like kind of dance funk of the summer you know i almost wanted to do the cha-cha slide at one point that's what i i mean that's what i have written here i just read what they tell me and then we got a susie 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 greenberg um this is a classic it's kind of uh, mean spirited but playful and sort of a really fun kind of version kind of full of spirit with kind of howl and quotes and even just li like i didn't even watch it but like listening to it like you know i've kind of mixed feelings about the songs but about that song but the energy of it is just completely infectious and then we got night two set one uh this was a this was an aborted uh the show was aborted in the middle of set two because of the rain but the set one began with cars trucks buses which is a great page tune moving on into wave of hope we got kind of a muscular jamming kind of kill devil falls style uh lower on the fretboard with some kind of wah wah action then uh minor ascending psych rock led by page uh, a repetition of the theme and and a harmony between the guitar and electric piano then sort of i have written here alas a modulation to major but then trey finds a fun bluesy theme underneath the major and then it kind of gets dancier and more enjoyable but then the rip chording back to the start of the song in the major key is is less than successful we got a funky bitch this is usually it's usually pretty par for the course but when you when you, certain moments like these songs, you know, if you're not listening to them, they can kind of pass you by. And that kind of happens to me sometimes with some of the more ones that stay pretty much the same the whole time. But when you hone in on it, you're like, this band is fucking amazing and just so tight, even when they're not like, even when they're not like artistically pushing the boundaries, they're still just incredible. And then so i so listening to this funky bitch you know it should be the same as every other one but you know i thought that trey was a little looser more improvisational i thought mike was kind of delivering some chaotic energy on the vocals and i honestly thought this was some of trey's best guitar work uh, thus far for this tour up to this point point. and then uh i guess the the trey song moving into set one um the trey showcase with hey stranger and i put down i gotta listen to these trey pandemic albums he's doing some good advertising um and i think i do at some point i'll listen to those um then we got a lawn boy what do you say about that back on the train this was interesting was kind of an inspired slightly atonal almost possum-esque soloing from trey then to close out a trio of when the circus comes it's ice and blaze on to end the first set and then this um second set which was which was stopped in the middle because of the rain. We got a chalk dust. I liked this. It was kind of upbeat, contemplative, a little bit bluesy. It sounded, it sounded a little like some of those contemporary versions of Harry Hood. And then an oblivion, which I thought was one of the jams of the tour up to this point, kind of moving organically from one space to the next and, and kind of hard to pin down and very much guided by intuition. And then closing out with Wedge, and sense and subtle sounds and uh trey wanted to put on the permanent record he did not want to stop they made him stop but you know it's probably a good idea that they made him stop because you know as my girlfriend pointed out it's electrical equipment if there's a thunderstorm probably safe to it's probably the safest thing to just stop anyway glad that fish are still with us and uh love you uh and sending lots of donuts out to you um i don't want you to be expecting like actual donuts but like if you go get some donuts or something and and like the yeah um come back for more come back there'll be more the donuts will be waiting for you